Hello. So I am here to introduce a new series coming to my channel. I don't know how frequently it'll be on my channel. Like, I don't know if I want it to be monthly. I don't know if I want it to be bi-monthly. I don't know how I want to go about doing this, but I am doing a new series, which you can tell by the title of this vlog is called author alphabet. It's something that I've kind of been like in the works of doing for a while now. I've kind of been trying to like revisit how I wanted to go about it and I kind of figured it out so that's why I'm doing it now. So basically what it is is I pick three books written by, for this one it is author alphabet for the letter N. So I would pick three books written by somebody with the name that starts with N, their first name, and then I will vlog my experience reading them and at the end I will let you guys know whether or not I plan on picking up any more of their writing or if I don't, why I don't want to pick up any more of their writing, stuff like that. So that is why I've decided to do that now. I'm ready for you guys to see what I've been doing for the past week in terms of my reading. So I will just tell you guys the books that I plan on reading and kind of what they're about, just a little bit. So yeah. The first book is And Then There Were Four by Nancy Whirlin. This is a book about five kids or teenagers who end up figuring out that their parents are trying to kill them. So stay tuned to figure out how that goes. The next book I'm planning on reading is Six Months Later by Natalie D. Richards. And this is about a girl who wakes up from like a nap and it's six months later. So it's pretty much exactly how the title says. It is six months later. She has no idea what happened for the past six months. She has absolutely no memory, but her life is pretty much upside down. Like she is now like a really good student. She is dating the popular guy she had a really big crush on. Her best friend doesn't like her anymore. And it's just like, she's trying to figure out what happened in these six months, why she has no memory of anything. So that's super exciting. And the final book. So originally I wanted to do, it's kind of a funny story by Ned Vizzini. Unfortunately, I didn't click with this story a lot at all. I kind of found it to be very, I don't know, I, I just, I wasn't in the right headspace for it. So I ended up giving up on that one. So I quickly went to Libby to see if there were any authors that started with an N that I could pick out their books that I think I would enjoy. And I found one called Out of Tune by Nora McClintock, I think her last name is. And it was basically about a girl who got murdered and this other girl named Riley was trying to figure out who murdered her. Something like that. Listen, I was all for the murder and suspense aspect this month so far, so yeah, stay tuned to see how all of these turn out. I'm really, really excited. I think this is going to be a great way for me to pick up authors' books who I otherwise really wouldn't pick up because I don't really have a way to prioritize books, so I feel like I'm always going to pick books by authors that I really, really love first before I just go and pick books by people who I might not know as much. So that's why I always have to pick for this particular series, new to me authors that start with whatever letter I am choosing. So I'm pretty much, I feel like I can do several segments of each letter, except for like anything like U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. I think I can only do one maybe for those, but for like anything above that, I feel like I could find at least do a, like a few different segments. So that's kind of the plan for now. I'm probably hoping over the next however long I do booktube, if it's a long time to do several segments of each letter. But for now, I'm just starting with N for no particular reason other than I wanted to. So let's just hop right in and see what happened during the week that I read these three books. So, <laughs> what is, like, why is my wall so depressing? I literally haven't even made it past page one in this book and I already have an issue. <laughs> That's cute. It's told in second person. I think this is my first time reading Young Adult where it's told in second person. At least in the first chapter, it's done in second person. And if it continues like that, I'm bitter because I don't like second person. I'm, I literally have never read anything in second person, but I'm here like hating my life. I'm up to 103 pages in and then there were four so I'm not loving it really at all right now there are five characters there is Antoine, Sarah Linda, Evangeline, Kenyon, 
and Caleb. We only get POVs from Caleb and Sarah Linda. Caleb is the one who's in a second person POV, which bothers me just an unreasonable amount. And Sarah Linda's is in first person, which is fine. I like that. So basically where we're at right now is that there was an incident. These five were texted that they needed to go to this place. And then there was an accident at that place. And now Antoine believes that it was his mom who tried to do it but i think he's trying to convince everybody that it was like all of the parents doing it but we haven't gotten there yet the writing itself is just very very bland and very like childish almost like i understand they're 16 but still like when i was 16 i wasn't as childish as i feel like everyone in this is but yeah i also i hate the characters like the characters are extremely unlikable so far Sarah Linda is a mess. Like, she's literally messy as fuck. Like, just because you are physically disabled doesn't give you an excuse to be a fucking disaster. Because that's what you are, sweetie. You literally had an inner monologue explaining why it was probably easier to be gay. Stop it. Get some help. Bitch, where? Bitch, what planet is it easier to be gay? I can't handle her. I can't handle her. And also, like, the writing style of Nancy Whirlin with all of her little, like, oh, it's easier to be, like, gay. I don't know how to angle this. Oh, it's easier to be gay. Oh, it's easier to do all this. Like, Nancy Whirlin is a Karen. Like, I am literally almost 97% sure that she is a Karen just by the vibes. I also Googled her. She's 58 years old, so there's that. I'm taking a break now. I don't know if I will finish... I want to get up to 200 pages tonight. I wanted to have two days per book, so I want to finish this in like this vlog thing in like six days. But I'm just, I'm really unamused with how this is going so far. Although I think the premise is really cool. Like if they find out that it's all of the parents banded together, part of me will be really surprised. So hopefully I'll get another update tonight. That's what I'm hoping for, but I'm really not sure because I do want to edit my video. Author Alphabet so far is definitely a disaster. So I still have two books to go after this one and I'm only 100 pages in. Oh my God, there's a family. I think they saw me. Also, hello for angles. Like we're here for this fucking 50 year old man trying to take a selfie angle. It's really working for me, I think personally. Okay, they're gone. I should really close my curtains. But yeah, it's just, yeah, I don't know. Cool, so great, bye. <laughs> oh yeah. 2020 mood <laughs> hitting you like a train so i have officially reached the 200 page mark and i'm actually liking it it's not the worst book i've ever read for sure right now one of the characters is dead which isn't a spoiler because that's on the back of the book but now the four other teenagers are like starting to think that okay like their parents actually have something to do with it and it's definitely a really interesting concept i will say that the book feels like it was written in like 2012 just by some of the things that they say within the story and some of the ways that the characters actually interact with each other which kind of it brings a disconnect to the story because the story was published in 2017 so i feel like it should have a certain level of i don't want to say maturity but it should have like a certain level of something that just is not there and that's a little disappointing to me but i will say the tension is there now like i'm sitting here on my couch sweating my tits off because it is hot as fuck but yeah i'm sitting here and i'm just like i'm so engaged in what's happening i think i'm gonna continue reading tonight i was thinking about editing part of my video because tomorrow i know i have to clean and then i have to work i just want to keep reading this book which is a really good sign there are obvious issues i'm having with it so far that at first they started to blame all of this on mental illness and that just bothers the shit out of me all the time but i'm actually really enjoying it so far so yeah i Completely changed my mind from the first part. I do think Nancy Whirlin, she still seems like a Karen to me in some of the things she says and does, but I'm having a really good time reading it and I'm actually really enjoying everything that's happening. And Sarah Linda, I changed my mind on her too because I thought she was literally just like annoying as shit, but she's actually like a bean. She's a pure bean and it's just like, I love her. I want to protect her with my whole heart and soul. So that is what's going on. I will update you once I've reached 300 pages, which probably won't be tonight, and it'll probably be tomorrow instead, but I do want to finish this book tomorrow, so I'll see y'all later. It's actually going.
going pretty well so far in terms of the story itself. It's really interesting, except I don't love the mental illness take that they had. Oh, hold on, I'm getting an order. Hi, welcome to my cafe, what could I get you? So yeah, it's actually going pretty well. I'm about 355 pages in, so let's see what happens. Ah, I just wanna know. So I just finished and then there were four and I'm, I have mixed feelings about this book because it started off, sorry if I'm being quiet, like Noah's in the other room trying to sleep. It started off really poorly, like it just, I didn't love the way that it started. I didn't love how weird it was to begin with, but after I got about like, I want to say 150 pages in, it got really interesting. I will say that I'm happy I started with this one because it kind of gets me more in the mystery mood. And one of the other books I'm reading for Author Alphabet is mystery as well. I don't fully know which one I'm going to go with next. It's either going to be It's Kind of a Funny Story or Six Months Later. I haven't fully decided, but I'm finished reading for today, I think. I might start later, I really don't know. But I do plan on editing now and finishing editing so that Noah can take his computer to work tomorrow. So, yes, I shall update you when I start reading the next book. Okay, listen, I'm not saying they're wrong. <laughs> but, like... <laughs> bitch. <laughs> I gave this four stars, but this is so fucking accurate. <laughs> <laughs> we love a good lighting moment it's like 1 a.m i don't know what i'm doing with my life i'm three quarters of the way done editing right now so i kind of thought it'd be fun if i took a break to just like read a little bit and start six months later by natalie d richards i'm more interested in this book because i want to finish this book by saturday and i'm off tomorrow and it's on my phone so like i can be home to charge it not at work reading it so that's kind of why i decided to pick this one next but i'm very excited about this i believe it's just about a girl who wakes up six months after being in a an accident and her life is pretty much the exact opposite of what she remembers it so i'm kind of interested to see how that goes and i have another one of natalie d richard's books on my tbr this one was the only one that was at my library so i'm interested hopefully i like it because i like the concept of her book so far so let's just jump right in so it is the next morning i am now 108 pages in hold on do you want to see her <laughs> And I'm really liking how fast paced this is. Like, I feel like everything is just going, going, going. And the author just started right in, right away with the situation. And I love that. I love that in books because my attention span doesn't really have the time to just deal with a bunch of bullshit before the actual story happens. So I'm loving that. I'm actually really enjoying her writing so far. I do have like an issue with the amount of descriptiveness if that's the word, I'm I'm tired. Leave me alone. I have an issue with that just because I don't think it's necessary. This book is quite a bit longer than I thought it was going to be, so I don't think it's necessary to have just paragraphs on paragraphs of descriptions. I don't know. So far, it doesn't really seem that necessary. If you were asking me, which is the point of this whole beautiful series, if I would pick up more of Natalie D. Richards' writing, I would say yes, absolutely. I think her writing is very interesting and the concept so far is really cool. I don't think it's a mystery so much as it's like a, a mental illness novel. Honey, you've got a big storm coming. But I don't really know. So I guess I'll see what happens. I'm on chapter seven and so far I'm really enjoying it and it's really easy to get through. Like I feel like I'm breezing through it really quick. So that makes it a lot more fun for this vlog because I know I can finish it by tomorrow. So I might try to finish it today. Like that's ambitious because I do want to film a video today. The video, we'll see what happens. I will check in when I'm 200 pages in and tell you guys how I feel about it, if I like it. I decided to redo my entire bookshelf and what do we have here? My entire bookshelf area redone plus my ring light and stuff. <laughs> but I pretty much, this entire first shelf over here are all of the books I have read and I'm super pumped about those. And then on the top shelf for my second shelf, which is right here, 
those are also books I've read. And then we have, a, when it comes to our second shelf, where I have a bunch of knickknacks and my owl crate box. And I pretty much have just like a break from where I have read to books I need to read. All the way down are fantasy. And then at the bottom, I do have my mystery section of books I haven't read for mysteries. And then moving all the way up here, I also have my dystopias that I haven't read, my contemporaries, and this basically I decided to make a shelf of the books I'm reading for the month. So if you can see, I have Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, I have Incendiary, I have the books that I chose for my TBR game that I own. <laughs> and then I also have two of the books for the vlog coming. So I'm going to change that each month. I have some historical fiction on this shelf. And then down here I have sci-fi, paranormal, and then Harry Potter, but we don't talk about her. So plus, I now have fairy lights and I'm super excited about them because they switch. So I'm like really pumped about those. So these are my bookshelves in case you were ever wondering. The bottom shelves are just like random books. So like Noah's books are on these two. And then over here, I have like books that just don't really fit in and my childhood books for my childhood favorite books video. But these shelves are the ones I care about the most. I'm really, really excited. So I just thought I'd include that in this vlog because I just cleaned instead of read. So yeah, I'm really happy. Okay, bye. Once again, we have this stellar lighting. So I am exactly 200 pages in to Six Months Later by Natalie D. Richards. And this boy just ordered this girl's food for her because he didn't want her to get fat and gain the freshman 15 when he goes off to college. I think our main character had a fantastic response to that because she was like, golly gee, looks like we're back in the 40s. Like in her head, obviously she didn't say it loud because she's like going through some stuff. But I have a message to Blake, the boy. I hope you choke on your wheat bread, sweetie. So I'm thoroughly creeped the fuck out. Okay. I'm 306 pages in and I literally have no idea how I didn't fully understand what was happening. Okay, for, I still don't fully understand what's happening, but I get a general idea now and I'm so confused as to how it possibly, possibly could have not entered my mind because it's so obvious given everything that's going on. But oh my god, I'm loving this so much. Like, I'm so fucking creeped out everybody in this story is fucking terrifying like i'm literally like watching my back i'm reading noah's asleep i'm like making sure that i'm like safe at all costs i'm like what is my hair all i want to do is finish this book tonight and i think i'm going to because i'm so invested like i i'm ugh, i'm so glad i picked this book okay I'm at page 400 now and not too much has changed since the last time. It's just, it's good. It's very good. I don't really know what else to say other than that. I'm still not 100% sure as to what's going on, but I have a very, I have like a, like a, like an almost clear picture of what I think is going on. And if it is what I think it is, it's definitely something really interesting and not something I've ever read about before. I am dying to finish. So I'm definitely going to finish tonight, even though I'm like literally exhausted and my eyes are blurring over, but like, it's totally fine. And I just, I haven't felt this invested in a story and this like on the edge of my seat in a very long time for a book. So that makes it even more exciting for me to read. And I'm very hopeful that it ends kind of how I want it to end, but at this point, I don't even know how, exactly how I want it to end. I have a couple of ideas, but like, they're just ideas. But at this point, she is starting to piece together certain things that have happened over the past six months that she's forgotten. And it's definitely, it's definitely creepy and it's definitely weird. And it's definitely like, why? Like, what is going on? So I will definitely update you guys again once I hit the 500 page mark. So it's pretty much all been resolved. I'm at page 500 now and I'm really happy with how this turned out. I will say I'm like thoroughly creeped the fuck out though because like honestly this book was kind of terrifying to read. It still is but I'm happy that it's pretty much over now and I guess these next like 50-ish pages are just going to be the conclusion and the follow-up of everything that happened and how she deals with these new relationships in her life and I'm really excited to hear that because I've been thoroughly creeped out this entire time reading it so having something nice 
and exciting to look forward to is making this a little bit more enjoyable for me because i like being creeped out don't get me wrong but like i'm so creeped out like there was a point where a man was standing in a window and i was literally like my heart was racing and i was like i will update you when i'm finally finished the entire book i only have like 50 pages to go so shouldn't be too long so it's literally like two and a half minutes later but there were only like not even 10 pages left before the acknowledgements came so i guess the last little bit of the book was acknowledgements and other things but yeah it's done it's over i loved this book i thought this book was amazing i'm giving it five out of five stars i'm definitely looking more into natalie d richard's work i am thoroughly impressed with how she got me to feel so creeped out and so intense all in once like i i love this this is definitely a book that i want to own at some point if i thought i would love it this much i would have purchased it but like i didn't think it was going to be as good as it was author alphabet has so far been a pretty big success so i've been putting off reading it's kind of a funny story now i don't really know why just part of me has been like nervous to pick it up i don't i don't understand it i don't know it's just it's a mood thing but i'm actually gonna start reading it now i do work in like an hour and a half so i will have to start getting ready at some point so i don't think i'll be able to update you guys before i go to work but i'm honestly just like i don't know how i'm gonna feel about this novel i'm nervous to read it if i'm being really honest i just i don't know what it is so a little like quick note i decided to kind of like not do it's kind of a funny story hold on i'll turn my fan off i am not loving it that much at all like i think it's very i'm just not in the right headspace for it and typically that doesn't bother me when i'm reading but for this book like i'm just i'm not i'm not i'm not feeling it i'm not in the correct headspace so i'm basically just going to read out of tune by i believe it's nora mccormick i'm gonna start that and i'm already a little bit more excited it's kind of like a murder mystery again which is a theme for this month but i'm 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 really excited so i'm gonna dive right in again i'm i'm going to work really soon so i'm gonna have to get ready to go to work very soon but for now i'm just gonna read a few pages and see if i feel this one or not but yeah So I'm about 100 pages in. Today is the day I wanted to finish all the books. So I'm hoping to be able to finish today. There's only 277 pages on the Libby app, but I don't really know how I feel about it so far. Our main character, Riley, is trying to solve a murder that happened to one of the really popular girls at her school. And this all takes place in a very small town. And it's like everybody thinks the girl's biggest competitor did it, but Riley doesn't. So she agreed to help and it's like it's not a bad story it's not a bad murder mystery but i don't know like it's just i don't think it's ever going to like i don't think it's going to stick with me really all that much it's just it seems very very basic it seems like one of those like movies like crime movies and that's fine but that's just not particularly what i'm into as a reader right now so i am about 200 pages into the story i just filmed one of my videos it's coming later so that's why i've like changed my hair a little bit but yeah i'm intrigued to say the least i have no idea who possibly could have killed the person that they're trying to figure out who did it like it's it's definitely really interesting i thought i'd be able to figure it out by now but i actually can't so i'm definitely interested to see where this goes so i just finished the book the final book for this vlog i'm super excited to have completed my first vlog i think pretty successfully i was right about something that happened i was right about who did it when i see someone oh she's licking herself peach Anyway, I enjoyed reading about music, about band, about all that stuff because for some reason I feel like I don't ever read a lot of books about band in school and that was something that like was a really big part of my life for so long. So I liked that aspect of it. I guess this is this is the end of my first episode of Author Alphabet and I hope you guys liked it and stay tuned for my outro so you figure out whose books I liked the best, which one I liked the least, and what? So, 
I've now read all of these books. You've made it to the end. Thank you so much for making it to the end. So let's talk about the books that I liked the least and work my way up to the best. So we'll go three, two, one. So the book that I liked the least was Out of Tune by Nora McClintock. It's not that I had an overt issue with this story. It's that I don't think I had a connection to this story. I don't own it. I didn't plan on reading it. It was one that I scrambled to get at the last minute. And overall, like, because of that, I don't think I really got the exact same experience as somebody who like really wanted to read this book or had it on their shelf for a very long time. Do I think the writing was good? Yes. And I probably will check out more of Nora McClintock's writing because honestly, it was interesting the way that she, she did the murder mystery so that it was hard to figure out who did it. Even though I did figure it out, I was questioning myself a lot and it wasn't blatantly obvious. I, I did enjoy that. So I think I will pick up more of her writing and I, I definitely haven't looked into it yet because I just finished the book like 20 minutes before filming all of this. My second favorite book that I read, so second place, The Silver Medalist of Author Alphabet is And Then There Were Four by Nancy Werlin. Shockingly, I ended up giving this book four stars. I actually really enjoyed my time reading this starting at 50%, I think or at least starting a couple hundred pages in. Because truth be told, the way it started, I was just kind of like, what is going on? I, I regret every decision I've made to lead me up to this moment. One of the POVs is in second person, so I was kind of just like, why would you tell a thriller in a second person point of view? I was just confused. But starting about halfway through, I actually got very invested and it actually got to the point where it was kind of creepy the way that it was done. I was just like, oh my gosh, like what's gonna happen? Like I'm shaking and Overall, I liked how it ended, I liked how it turned out, I liked the story itself, enough to give it 4 out of 5 stars, but I don't think I will be checking out any more of Nancy Worland's writing, because listen, I looked at what her other books are on Goodreads, and I wasn't a fan of any of the synopses, and honestly, I think I'd like to leave it with And Then There Were Four, because... I'm not the biggest, biggest, biggest fan of her writing. I liked the way that she crafted this story, but her writing style as a whole felt very immature. This book was published in 2017 and it felt like it was published in 2012 because of some of the ways that she would phrase things and some of the things that she said. And I wasn't the biggest fan of that as the reader. I was just kind of like, that could have been phrased in a better way. That could have been said in a different way. And overall, I just, I didn't love that aspect of the story itself. So do I think any of her other books will interest me enough to actually go in? Probably not. I don't think I gained another author who I love from this, but I did gain a story that I'm actually really interested in and I would definitely recommend to people. So I'm very thankful for that. Now the book that I loved the most out of this series is Six Months Later by Natalie D. Richards. This book, I, I'm chalking it up to the fact that I read this in like a day and I read this at three in the morning. It was so creepy. Like the way that it was done was so like, I was, oh my God, I was like shaking. I was like, what is going to happen? Like, oh my God, I couldn't figure out what was going on. I don't know why I couldn't figure out what was going on because toward the end, it actually was very obvious. I was just so wrapped up that I completely missed all of the signs, but I really enjoyed the way that she did this. I really loved every single thing about this. I'm so excited to check more of Natalie D. Richards writing out. Honestly, like I'm all for her books. I have, I think, two more now on my list that I want to check out. One I think is not even out yet. I think it's coming out in October, but I'm honestly like, she definitely found a new fan in me. So I feel like this was overall a really successful experiment for myself to do this kind of like author alphabet situation. I really enjoyed my time doing it and I... Two out of the three authors, I feel like I could find more work of theirs that I enjoyed. One for sure I did. So I'm really excited to continue to do this more on my channel. I doubt that I'll do any in August just because I have a few more ideas that I want to do. And if I do too many reading vlogs, I'll overwhelm myself because each reading vlog has like a different book to it. But honestly, I'm just really impressed with everything about the way that this worked out. So... I'm really, I'm looking forward to finally doing the next installment whenever I actually do. But yes, thank you for tuning into my first reading vlog. Let me know in the comments below if there is anything that you would change about the way I did the reading vlog, anything you wish I added or didn't add because I'm still new to this so I don't really know how to vlog. And of course, if you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe for more content. I post three times a week. Sometimes I do my very, very best. And until next time, bye readers!